Hello and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about the open source hardware projects and how they constitute a very particular and interesting form of knowledge commons. I'm Pascal Carpentier and I'm part-time PhD student from uh, Erasmus University Rotterdam School of Management. So what is open source hardware? Open source hardware is really the equivalent of open source software in the sense that you build a physical artifact, you build something and you want anyone to be able to make, modify, distribute and, and, and use it. Um, it's um, a very modular approach that uh, brings um, usually cost reduction in the manufacturing, very adapted to a low and middle income countries um, because it's usually easier to repair and the openness of the documentation may make it very simple um, to assess, modify, adapt and so on. Um, recently, we had the case of uh, COVID-19 pandemics where supply chain were disrupted and open source hardware brought very interesting options uh, for hospitals that could manufacture on-site missing pieces for ventilators or sometimes for visitors. Open source hardware project and open source software project are very similar. They are both knowledge commons. I will probably use also the word community interchangeably with a common in this presentation. The, the, the beginning of the development stage, uh, are, the first development stage are very similar. Um, up to the point where the open source hardware project they produce the physical artifact. And that physical artifact, that object they're trying to build, is subject to, to constraints of the tangible world. Subject to um, being actually built somewhere uh, with equipment with um, a rival access to that place or to the equipment to build it. And, and that completely changed the level of complexity of the project. Um, also, from an intellectual property perspective, um, copyright uh, laws do not protect fully uh, that object because uh, what copyright does, or, or incidentally the open source licenses, they protect the description um, of the object, um, the schematics, the documentation but they do not protect what this object or this, this artifact is supposed to do. That would be more of the patent field. And last but not least, our um, physical artifact is, um, in, in our case here, we're talking about medical device, um, is subject to the regulation for medical device because what is at stake is the patient safety. Uh, um, but it, in other field, it could be electromagnetic compatibility or many other things and many other regulations. And these regulations, they bring a strong constraints on the common and they influence the common uh, knowledge governance. So our case um, is about a community called Ecopen and what they've decided to create is a, a tool called the Ecostetoscope. The Ecostetoscope is the modern version of the all good stethoscope that any um, doctor has in its pocket and that is in fact a tool to listen inside your body to help you to um, orient the, the diagnostic, to, to do the diagnostic and, and, and see what, what if there's a problem with your organs and so on. Now with the technology we have, we can create a portable probe and plug it to a smartphone and actually see inside the body. And, and the, this community have decided to do this device, but in, in, in the sense that it make it affordable affordable to the largest possible number of people, really to have something cheap and widely used and create this movement, which is completely in line with what a knowledge common does in terms of creating new knowledge and disseminating as much as possible. Along with the hardware, they also have the training aspect and, 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 and the medical party aspect. And, and look at that, this is what open source hardware actually means. It's putting all these components on motherboards and, 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 and putting all these wires and things. So to study this uh, community, um, we've relied on the Common Knowledge Common Framework. That is in fact the evolu an evolution adapted to the Knowledge Common of the IAD that, um, that is very well known and most of us know. Um, so what we've done is we've interviewed community members uh, medical directors and engineers uh, and so on and also uh, we have access to um, bylaws, uh, meeting minutes, archive and website so we, we've been able to really um, have a comprehensive view of what this community is trying to achieve and um, and we add finding under the form of social dilemmas that I'm going to present to you now.
The objective of this common is to secure the dissemination of the knowledge and to, to enrich uh, this knowledge around the echostetoscopy. And paradoxically, um, what we found is that to make to secure this dissemination, the, the common has to uh, be closed temporarily. They have to create a legal entity to comply with the medical regulation because the device they create is a medical device class 2A and that means that they need to follow certain um, quality guidelines and, and comply with a quality management system and a voluntary based organization cannot comply with this. They need to provide um, work contracts and, and, and resume and, and uh, basically have a system of accountability at each step of the development, which is, is not exactly what happened when you are in this the, in, in, in the chaos of the um, common based uh, production. Uh, likewise, the, the, the limited protection uh, that copyrights give uh, makes it necessary um, to think about okay, what's the best way to protect the innovation uh, that the, the community creates to make sure we make it available to, the, to, to a larger audience and to the public domain. And that could mean potentially to patent it and then uh, make it available to everyone. Maybe it means not to do anything and continue with uh, licenses and partial protection, taking the risk that someone could take your knowledge and then patent it against you. Um, basically, all these elements caught the co community a bit off guard and this unintended privatization um, led to a lot of discussion and now I'm going to present you the the way forward and the the, the result of the agreement of the community in terms of um, answering to these challenges. So the community I followed had this very interesting approach. Um, they to overcome the challenge of um, preventing the common from ending because of the, tra the transformation and basically volunteers and community members to, 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 to stop working because ultimately the, 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 the common became private. What they've done is they've, they've created a separate project fully open for educational purpose, the ultrasound lab kit. And they just said to the volunteers, okay, now we have to work on the, um, the industrialization part of the, the, the making of the probe you have to make to create a private entity so now you can work on this educational project and to answer to the second problem that is okay but i'm volunteer but now you're a private entity so why should i care and go on working with you guys in fact what they said was very interesting they said like, as soon as we have the new version the new release so right now we close we industrialize and sell low cost low price the probe and we'll work on the new iteration of the probe. So as soon as the new probe is ready, then we'll make the first probe open source again. So we keep the promise that was we are open, we secure the project, so we avoid being uh, um, copycat by uh, an, an industry or partner somewhere because we've closed the project, we got some IPs and we control it tightly but the work of the community would be public. It's just a question of timing and sequence. And having this approach of portfolio management was really, really helping because you can reassign the volunteers to different projects. Through the exploration of um, this key study, um, we could witness that the regulation is really uh, needed and has to evolve uh, to a low a complex open source hardware project to really flourish. Uh, we had the example of a medical device application in 2013 that gave guidance for development of software. Then later on, um, the, the regulation allowed the free printing in the medical device field. We had some exceptions uh, during the COVID-19 and, and really there needs to be an adaptation for a community and volunteer based kind of uh, project. The second really interesting uh, insight we got was on the, the creative way this community put together to survive through the transformation of their governance and, the, and this um, privatization step, let's put it that way. Um, this idea of using multiple projects in different phase uh, to keep momentum and transform the common was really interesting and will require further research. 
Um, and last but not least, I think um, this uh, case study shows us a very interesting thing in the sense that privatization is a mandatory step in complex uh, medical device open source hardware project and probably also in, in other fields. But interestingly enough, this privatization step doesn't mean the end of the common, but in fact, it's more a, a way to secure the future of the common. And, and we certainly require a bit more research. This uh, video comes to an end, and I strongly invite you to contact me if you want to go further into this uh, discussion, in particular related to um, the work um, going forward. And uh, thank you for uh, viewing it until this point. Thank you.